Hello and uh, welcome to another uh, Kingdom Analysis. Uh, my name is uh, is Martin. I'm working my way through a whole range of kingdoms uh, and just kind of like analysing them in the 867 start initially uh, and thinking about what are the sort of things that a player needs to think about when they're beginning in this in this region. Now this is going to be the Kingdom of Baratia. And I'm not. Sh I'm sure that is not how you pronounce Baratia, but I'm going to call it Baratia. And it's uh, it's quite a large kingdom, very very uh, low level of development, and the far northeastern corner of the um, of the map. We're going to be having a look at all of the following things. Excuse me, I look down at my notes. We're going to be looking at the local rulers. So what's the kind of like the political situation in the area? We're going to be thinking about the inhabitants, that is the populations, the actual people of these places. What are their culture? What are their uh, what is their religion like? And how does that relate to the broader area around them? We're going to be looking at the land itself and the terrain and what impact that might have on game decisions. And we are going to be thinking about title organisation. Um, how, you know what we what we might want to be thinking about keeping as a part of our domain uh, for sort of short, medium, and longer term, and what and how we might be uh, dishing those other uh, titles out to vassals as we grow. And finally, we're just talk about what might be your goals if you decide to start in this part of the world. Uh, what might be the things that you decide to focus on doing? Okay, so let's have a little look at the kind of the political situation. Now, when I do my playthrough, I'm going to be beginning as the Duke of this place, uh, Dauria. Um, I'm probably uh, going to to build my own uh, leader to start with to make it a bit more a bit more fun, a bit more interesting. But um, uh, he obviously rules this whole uh, this whole duchy here. You can see he's got the duchy title, and he actually has all four of the. Uh, county titles. I'm just going to check there are four because I, I keep notes on these sorts of things. Yes, there are four county titles. He holds them all. Um, the obvious thing is you see this this um, kingdom is here is very very sort of disunited. There are lots of rulers, but they're not small. Uh, they're not small. You know, if you think about the Ireland analysis we did, we really were looking. At taking over one county rulers one after another. Kotara uh, is ruled by this man here, and he has three counties. He doesn't have the duchy title. I think the, some of these are in his duchy. We've got this guy here. Um, he also has uh, three duchy titles. So they're much, much more powerful. 1,000 men, 1,250 men. I mean, these are similar to or bigger than our own armies. Uh, we've got this uh, this realm here, uh, 1,100 men, and yep, three county titles. I think this one's the same. Three county titles, four county titles. Uh, you've also got a, uh, a little kingdom down, no, sorry, a little duchy down here, very small duchy, just two counties, but that's obviously a part of this much bigger uh, empire that we'll talk about in a little bit. But it's perfectly possible, in a very, very straightforward way, to take all of these um, in a relatively short amount of time. The difficulty that you're going to find with all of them is that you're going to need to build up a better army. You've, you, you're going to start with a certain amount of prestige. We've got 450 here. We've got some, uh, you know, some good uh, men at arms, but obviously that will be randomised each time that you start. But you're going to need to take a little bit of time and do a little bit of work to build that army up and make sure that it's powerful enough to take out your first target. At the beginning, you're only going to be able to take one county. So if I declare war, want to declare on this guy, you see we don't have, um, you know, we need to exalt it among where we're a long way away from that, uh, even illustrious, a long, long way away from it. Um, I, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to take them one county at a time. And, you know, we've come across that problem before. It means that we take the county, that's fine. We start to incorporate it into our realm, but we can't then attack that leader again for I think it's five years, we're going to have to go and find somebody else. So we're going to be finding that we would be like attacking Kotara, and then uh, when we're ready, we'll attack uh, Chuya, and then we'll attack this one, and then we'll attack that one, and by that time we might be able to get back to Kotara, we'll be able to attack that. And of course, at each bite of the apple, we become stronger and they become somewhat weaker. So by the time we're going back round, it's going to be easier, but it's still going to take a considerable amount of time to be able to take enough of these counties to form the kingdom, and in the, this case, the kingdom title requires 
Um, well, we only need four more counties, uh, and then of course to save up the um, the money, we can form the kingdom, and then probably it would make sense to start trying to perhaps vassalize uh, the rest of them. The other th thing to talk about is that many of these, as, as you saw as we were going around, many of these people have not formed the duchy that they more or less control. This guy is a count, he's a count of three uh, territories, but he is not, does not have the duchy title of this area, which is largely within his, it's entirely within his, his realm. Um, that means that you can form it. So if we can make some money, we can form those as we are able to and give ourselves a boost to our uh, prestige, which is obviously going to help us to build armies as we're tribal at the beginning of this this campaign, um, etc. So it's going to take time, but forming that kingdom is absolutely possible. We're going to need, obviously, to stay away from the Uda Valley. So the Uda Valley is, as the best way of showing this, the Uda Valley is a small two-county duchy here, and it is controlled by uh, your man here. Uh, High Chieftain Husum, and I think he's got the duchy title and he's got both uh, counties, but he has a liege lord, Kirkhu, the uh, Kakan Uzar of the, of the Kirkis Kaganate. We can't attack the Uda Valley, we'd be absolutely uh, smashed. Um, very, very difficult to get into this man's uh, lineage, kind of like plant a daughter or anything, because he's got, he's got, he's got four sons. Uh, and they're very, very unkeen. I've had a look at it. Very, very unkeen to marry a low life like me. But I think by the time we're forming into, into kingdoms, we're going to be able to play havoc with um, the Kirkis Carnate. Um, so Kirkis Carnate, obviously very powerful. A very sensible thing to do might be right from the beginning is to become make him your liege lord. Um, he will accept it. Um, if you've got a good leader, um, perhaps perhaps very good at s good spy master, for example, got lots of sort of uh, intrigue skills. It might be become his spy master, and I think it would be almost rude not to immediately murder him if you get into a, as close to him as that, uh, and then work your way through. Either way, one way or another, the Kirkis Carnate is going to be a very important part of this playthrough. It might be that you're able to get into the position of becoming that emperor because he's an, he's an emperor. Or it might be that you you force that great empire to, to, to break up into smaller parts so that you can like take it over uh, one by one. But obviously any strategy has got to be thinking very, very carefully about what happens in the, uh, in the great carnate here. So let's have the, a look at the culture um, of, the, uh, of the peoples here. Now you see we've got our own culture here, the Buryat culture, and we're hoping eventually to be the... Uh, the king of Buryat, so we're going to be king of our own, like kind of very sort of distinct culture. Um, but it's quite a small culture relative to, uh, you know, the areas around us. We've got the Kyrgyz over here, we've got Mongols over here, who, who we are uh, culturally related to. And, um, and of course, we speak um, Mon a Mongolic language, so which, which I think is the same language that is spoken all around these sorts of areas that we might eventually w uh, want to be certainly interacting with, maybe, maybe, maybe ruling. So we are at the heart of a huge Mongol cultural area, um, but we have a particular sub-branch of it called the, the Burak culture. And what's special about the cult that this culture is, because it's relatively small, we're the head of it. So that's, uh, if, if, if we're starting as this particular uh, leader, um, if we didn't, we very quickly become it by just taking you know, one or two uh, counties. So you're very, very quickly going to become the, uh, the realm leader. But the, if, if we have a look just very quickly at the um, development, it's, it's basically zero everywhere. And the problem with that is that it's... It, 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 we're, we're going to be picking up innovations incredibly slowly. So longer term, we need a strategy for improving that. And you can see that we've got mustering grounds and quilted armour and plenary assemblies. I mean, that's worse than an island start. We often have four or five um, innovations. We have three. Um, so, you know, long way to go. <laughs> and it's going to be incredibly slowly um, that, that we work our way th through these as things stand. Um, we do, however, have some interesting... Obviously, this is a male-dominated uh, culture. I think um, 
you cannot make uh, females leaders, um, but they can in, inherit if they if they if there are no no boys. This is the this is a good one. However, most of the other cultures that are around us have this as well. Horse lords allow us to build horse archers. They cost two hundred and seventy gold, I think, per level in each regiment. So they're very expensive, but you look at the stats, they're great all across. So they're, they're a great uh, men at arms to be investing in and building up over time. The difficulty with them is that they're really awful in mountains. And actually, this is a start that begins in the mountains. I think it's once you get onto the sort of the flat ground, onto the step proper, uh, they're very, very effective. In those first early campaigns fighting uh, to actually cap, you know, take that kingdom, they're, they're going to be a mixed blessing, I think that's the truth. Um, step tolerance is interesting, it just means that really uh, it's very, very easy converting uh, people from, from religions and, and, and the like. Sacred mountains, um, we gain piety when we build buildings in those holdings, so it's going to be, you know, we've got lots of holdings around here which are mountainous so um, you know, it's going to be worth uh, developing those because we're going to get some, some piety in addition to what we normally get and, and taxes are slightly higher in, um, in mountain areas, 5% higher but we'll look at the, the terrain in a minute but actually yeah, mountains aren't the best uh, places to be kind of like developing long term anyway. Mystical ancestors is a disadvantage really, it just makes it impossible for us to disinherit dynasty uh, members and but something that you of course is missing from here is things like Ting Meat, uh, Wittengmont, uh, which I don't think even if we reform Boreat, I don't think we can have those. Um, they'd be under realm, wouldn't they? But basically, these are the elective um, succession types. We don't have an elect elective dis does we don't seem to have an elective succession type available to us any time early in the game. So we are going to come across issues of having to uh, manage a federate partition um, for a very, very long time in the game. Uh, so we are going to have um, all those kind of issues and we can't even dis disinherit our, our children. So it's an interesting culture. In some ways, it's a weak culture. You know, this is the only strong thing really about it, is those horse lords. Um, but I think it's possible for that to become uh, very important later on. So. So let's have a look at the uh, at the religions. Obviously, we're, we're Tengriism, uh, and we are actually a part of uh, the vast. You know, all these other places have got to, you know share our our religion. Um, we've got this Turimic up here. Um, Turimic, I think, is related to us. Uh, well, we consider them hos hostile, so uh, perhaps not. Um, some interesting things about uh, about it is first off, we you know we are male dominated, and that's going to give us perhaps the benefit of at least not having to worry about females in succession. Uh, we tend to, uh, be, being pluralist, uh, it means that we can convert 20% um, uh, more, 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 more slowly, but <coughs> it's easy for us to rule over people with a different faith. They're less likely to, uh, to join factions. Um, and in the normal way, we have a, a theocratic um, a theocratic religion, so our, um, our temple holdings are leased out to priests. But we are, there are very few or none in this part of the world. It isn't something that we need to be thinking about in the early part of the game till we become feudal and start to actually um, actually sort of like build those. There are three, I think, maybe more than three. Oh, there's four or five um, holy sites. Only three that are really within our, our area of, 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 of control. And um, uh, this one's making our, our knights much more effective. The thing is, of course, that it's doing it against with all the other Tengris as well. We're probably going to be fighting Tengris quite a lot. Relatively minor prowess per level of devotion. And over here, an improvement to our light cavalry and, um, and archers and things like that. Probably not that impactful, depending on our kind of strategy for building our army. Esotericism, es esotericism is, is really, really good uh, because uh, it makes the wise man um, virtue a virtue. Uh, so we get uh, plus 10 Tengri opinion if we're a wise man and we uh, also get additional piety per turn. So if I'm building a leader, I'm going to be thinking about 
possibly using the wide, wise man, mystic and miracle worker as well. They're a little bit less common. Uh, wise man also, we can get it generically. Um, children with the learning education focus are, have a reasonable chance of getting the, uh, the wise man trait. So that's useful. Ancestor worship uh, just gives a bit of a bonus really to your newborns um, and to yourself when you get married. Uh, and it be increased to uh, levels of, uh, of prestige. Uh, that could be useful at the beginning of a playthrough as a way of like, picking somebody who perhaps is going to give you a couple of hundred prestige and, and finding that doubled to sort of 400 or something like that. And that you know, it, it makes thinking about the prestige of the person you're marrying uh, much, much more worthwhile. And warmonger means we have to be a war an awful lot. So we need to be thinking about what kind of a character is going to be best uh, for that. Um, when, we're, when, we're, when we're working our way through. Uh, interesting that brave is a virtue, um, just um, and honest both have kind of considerable drawbacks. Actually, brave has a considerable drawback in that you're more likely to die in battle, but um, very often um, you, you, you don't want your leader involved in battles anyway. Uh, sins are the obvious things, um, I suppose, you know, are, well, arbitrary, craven, and deceitful. The problem with the sins is that they're all the things that make you uh, really, really good at intrigue. So you build a character that's going to be really, really good at intrigue. They're going to be, uh, you know, negative piety most likely. So that's something to be very, very careful about because I think in this situation, with such a powerful uh, neighbour, we are going to want to be, uh, you know, somewhat intrigueful. Uh, we can obviously have multiple marriages. Males can have multiple marriages. Witchcraft is criminal. Um, and that probably does it for does it for the um, for the holy site for the for the religions. So let's just have let's zoom in a little bit and just have a little bit of a look at the terrain hereabouts. And basically, there's, there's four types of, of terrain. We've got we've got the mountains, we've got the hills, we've got the tiger mountains. Very very low supply limits. Um, very, very poor sort of development growth. But actually, the supply limit helps the defender. So, so one thing we've got is very, very defensible counties at the beginning of, uh, of, this, of this, this playthrough. There's a tiger one there, but most of these are mountains. Very, very strong defensively. Um, and not even, even partly because, um, you know, the combat width is so much smaller. So a force that's attacking you, that is bigger than you, doesn't gain much advantage by being bigger because you, you're only ever to use a you know, part of your force at any one time. And of course, 12 um, defender advantage, which is really quite substantial. So this is very, very, very good defensive terrain. Long term, probably not brilliant terrain for, uh, you know, for, for developing and, and building, uh, you know, going, going forward into the mid and, uh, and late game, probably want to be moving away from some of these areas. Uh, then we got some we got some hills down here, haven't we? So this is this is hills. I thought I was tiger. This is hills. So hills are slightly better than 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 the mountains. They're a bit like mountains, but not quite so much. You've got uh, you still got the slow movement speed. You've got still got a supply limit, a development limit, a, a penalty to development, but it's much much less than in the mountains. So if there was somewhere you wanted to develop, you know, you'd probably be thinking about the hills rather than the mountains. You've still got limited combat width, but it's 80%, not 50%. You've still got a combat defender advantage, but it's five, not 12. Okay, so it's very, very light hills, but kind of less, if that makes if that makes sense. And then over here, we've got the tiger. And see here, a very, very small limit, uh, uh, penalty to development growth of only 5%. Uh, supply limit is 20% is smaller. Um, combat with 80%, some respects, this is not dissimilar to the hills, but it's only a four uh, combat uh, advantage for, the, uh, for the, the, the defender. The thing is, all, all, but the, th the thing is that we're going to be on the attack most of the time and we're the one that's going to be facing those penalties. We need to do uh, to think through very carefully before we go into attack to make sure that we've got the strength necessary. To, to win the campaign, to defeat them in the mountains uh, with all of the advantages that being in the mountains is likely to give them. Okay, so now let's think about the, the kind of the structure of the duchies, the stu structure of the counties. I, I always make one of these up before I play. 
um, so that I can get a, um, a sense. So if I just show you the duchies, so there are one, two, three, four, five. So Uda Valley, uh, Dauria, Bargu Bargujin, Tukum, Baigulis, uh, Sagan, Baigal. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the ones in the kingdom that we want. Uh, this is not. This is in. These are in a different uh, in a different kingdom. So, of those five, because none of them have church holdings, none of them have cities. Essentially, every county is just worth the same. There's no such thing as a. As a, as a really, they're all got zero development. They're all equally valuable. So in terms of having two duchies in the early game when you become the king of this area, in terms of having two duchies, I think you need to be thinking about which ones have the most um, counties that you can combine in such a way uh, with, the, with whatever your domain limit is. Now my domain limit here is only three, but of course when I become a king that'll go up to four, when I got married it might go up to five. So thinking, for example, let's say this character ends up settling with about five um, domain uh, capacity, I would be looking at, for example, if you take uh, Dauria, this has four, uh, four counties. Um, none of the others have four. Bargium Tukum has, actually no, that's not true. Bargem Tukum also has four, okay? Um, but if we've got five, do you see what I mean? You're, you're, you, we'll have one duchy, Dauria, which actually uh, is the capital of the, of the kingdoms. We have our four, and we've got like a spare, which we'll kind of have to like put into some other, into some other sort of uh, uh, duchy. What makes sense, perhaps, is to have a two and a three. So for example, the Uda Valley, that has two uh, counties, and it might be that I decide long term that Uda Valley is going to be one of my duchies, and I'm going to own both of the counties there, as well as uh, Tassana Beigel, because that has three. So I have two duchies, and I can own in, in their entirety uh, the counties, uh, the counties within them. That's what I think I would be thinking about doing longer term. And if I had, if I had six uh, domain limit, then I'd want Dauria and the Uda Valley because that adds up to six. If I've only got four, I'll be uh, uh, maybe just going for Dauria or or, um, or perhaps uh, go for by Galuls and Uda Valley, both of which have two. That adds up to four. So so you see what I mean? I'm trying to mix and match these together to kind of um, give me myself sort of like maximum sort of capability, and then. As the game progresses, we are going to want things that give us better uh, horsemen, essentially. And um, here we have it: heavy, no, yeah, heavy cavalry, he archer cavalry damage plus four. So we're going to want to be looking for war camps because every war camp we have in our domain is going to improve the effectiveness of that heavy, that heavy archer cavalry that we're going to be getting. We can want gathering halls to help pay for them because that's how we're going to get additional prestige and, um, and then perhaps markets. And then actually palisades, only really important if we see ourselves as being in a, a kind of a defensive kind of like position. Longer term, these are not the, but the richest lands in the game. If we become feudal and you happen to still be the Duke of, uh, of Dauria, each of these counties has three baronies. Um, yeah, all of them do. Okay, so, you know, there are, there, are, there are worse. Three, three. But at the end of the day, there are going to be richer lands somewhere else. And I think long term, you can build this, this kingdom, you can make this kingdom uh, an important power base for you as you leapfrog over the Kyrgyz Khanate and grow and, 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 and expand. And so we come to the last, the last part where we simply think about what might be the kind of the goals for for this individual. Um, and I think there's one very, very obvious one. Here's our character here. Got, he's got a decision available to him to become the greatest of the Khans, King of Kings, Khan of Khans. I have no idea 
why you wouldn't be aiming to do this, and I'll show you why in just a moment. The first is actually, I think it's very achievable. It requires that you are step and we are exalted among men. Well, we're going to be going on conquests. We're going to get there. We're going to get to exalted among men. Uh, the highest title uh, held is got to be empire. So we do have to become an emperor. Realm size is 100. It's currently four. We've got tribal government um, and we are, yeah, step re region. 100 realm size. Well, if we're 100 realm size, we're going to be uh, able to have an empire title by then. But... I had a quick look. This empire here, if you are able to find a way of usurping that, of marrying a daughter to uh, you know a, a young guy with a, with a <coughs> you know using uh, some sort of way of bending um, the Khan's arm and getting getting a, a matrilineal marriage with a with a young child of this dynasty and then murdering everybody and rising to the top of it. If you are able to do that. There's 94 counties in that empire. If you can't, try to get it to dissolve and increasingly take bits out of it. And you'll very quickly start to, to conquer large chunks of it. Be, there'll be duchies, there'll be whole kingdoms that you might be able to take in one go once your um, kind of like uh, renown is, is high enough. Take this and, uh, and, and this little area here and you would have enough to form the King of Kings, Khan of Khans. Now, having just look at what the benefits of this are, and this is why I think this is exciting, you get the title, Greatest of Khans. I love a title. You get a nickname, Genghis Khan. You gain a level of fame. You gain access to a Mongol invasion, Kassa's Belly, which I think is a really, I believe, is a very cheap way of, uh, of attacking targets. Your realm becomes the Mongol Empire. You get the high, the law, the high partition. One, I mean, bearing in mind how slowly the Mongols are probably going to be developing technology, here's an opportunity for you to to, to grab that higher up technology relatively early. And there's this: you get an army of thirty one thousand three hundred and fifty men. Become the greatest of Khans, and you can begin the greatest kind of invasion of um, of of them all. Absolutely going nuts. That's what I think I'm going to be trying to do next Friday when I, uh, I, I publish my, uh, my game on YouTube. Thank you very much for listening to this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got something out of it. Um, I'm going to be doing these every, uh, every couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing another one. If there is a, um, a, a place in the world where you would perhaps like me to focus, then you know put, the, uh, put, put some comments in the, in, in, in the bottom. Uh, if you think I missed anything or you've got some other ideas about the way that this might play out, you know, make some comments. And uh, don't forget to, uh, if you got this far, if you've listened to the whole thing, you know, give it a thumbs up as well and uh, definitely consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.